Okay, so for the very first question on our quiz, we had to see for what values of x would this function be increasing. So we needed to go look at our first derivative. And so we have f prime of x is equal to 3x squared plus 6x minus 9. And we're going to set this equal to 0 because we need to find that critical point. And if we set this equal to 0, we can divide everything through by 3. So we have x squared plus 2x minus 3. And when we factor, we have x plus 3 times x minus 1. And so if we do a quick graph of this, then we see that we have zeros here at negative 3 and positive 1. And we know that our function is going to be increasing when f prime is positive. So we need to look and see well, where is f prime above the x-axis. And that's going to be in this area here. So that's going to correspond with those x values. And here, that's going to correspond with those x values. So it looks like our answer choice should be C. For this problem, you were asked to arrange the values at 1, and you have to go through the function, the first and second derivative. Now, twice differentiable, that just means you can take the derivative twice. That means this function is the type of function you can take the derivative more than once. And so here, if we're pinpointing at this particular value, and this is the graph of f, well, I know f at 1 is 0 because we're sitting there on the x-axis. Well, f prime at 1, I'm not going to know a specific value for that or f double prime. But I should be able to pick out a sign for this. So f prime at 1, notice what my function is doing here at the value of 1. Would my function be increasing or decreasing here? Well, this function is increasing. So if my function is increasing, I know my derivative is positive. So it's safe to say I don't know a specific value for f prime of 1, but I do know the sign is going to be positive. And very similar, we are going to do the same idea for f double prime of 1. I have no idea what that specific value is, but notice my function is concave down like a frown. It is concave down, so that tells me that value is negative. So, if we're going through and ordering these from least to greatest, we see that the smallest amount is f double prime at 1. So, if that's the smallest amount, then that gets rid of a, b, and c. And then the next amount that would be smaller would be f at 1 because that is 0. So, f at 1 should be next in our lineup. So that automatically throws out E, so my answer choice is D. All right, and for the next one, we are looking at the graph of H, and we need to know which of the following could be the graph of H prime, or the derivative. And so we need to look at what's going on as far as increasing and decreasing, and possibly some horizontal tangencies here. It looks like we might have a horizontal tangent in this area and this area. So that means down here, my graph should have some x-intercepts. So whenever I start looking through here, notice that A only has one x-intercept, so it can't be A. B only has one x-intercept, so that can't be it. Now the remaining three, they do have two x-intercepts, so we're going to have to look a little further here. Notice that the function is increasing over this interval here. We're increasing here, 
and we're increasing here. So that means we have to be above the x-axis and above the x-axis on our graph. Because if my original function is increasing, the derivative is positive. h prime is going to be greater than 0. So before I cross, I need to be above the x-axis. And then it looks like we're going to 0. And then we decrease. And then we go back above. So it looks like then that's going to have to really be answer choice E. Because we are above, we have our x-intercept. We are below, x-intercept and above. So my answer choice is E. Now, we could throw out D because notice here we're starting to turn again on this graph. And I don't know enough from the previous graph to know whether or not we're changing here. So that's why we threw out D. All right, now number four. Um, number four, it was very important for us to realize that G was negative. And that's telling us right here that this value here is a negative. So I know F prime of X, we could think of this as X squared minus four and then I would put just a negative here. Now, we need to know, um, let's see, looking at all this, we're talking about relative mins and maxes, so those are critical points. So if I set my derivative equal to zero, I'm gonna have um, zero equals x squared minus four, and so, that tells me that x is going to be plus or minus 2. So let's look at the original. We do have a squared function, but remember if that is a negative, that means my parabola is flipped over. So I do go through positive and negative 2, but my parabola is turned upside down because of that negative. And so we have our negative 2 here, our positive 2 here, and so Let's see which one of these would be true. A says F has a relative maximum at X equals negative 2 and a relative minimum at X equals 2. Well, I would just pick on the last part here, X equals 2. They say a relative minimum. But really, I have a relative maximum here because my derivative is going from a positive to a negative. So I know it can't be A. And so, notice we have relative maximum in B. So let's check and see if this is gonna be true. A relative minimum at negative two. And we do have a relative minimum. We're going from a negative to a positive here. So the correct answer is B. So for number five, we're looking to see, well, which of the following um, functions have a relative maximum? over this open interval. So again, just like the previous problem, if we're talking about a relative max, then we're looking at the derivative changing from a positive to a negative. And if we're talking about graphically, that means we change from above the x-axis to below the x-axis. So let's look through our answer choices and see where do we go from above to below? That's what we're looking for, from above to below. So here on the first one, it looks like we go from above to below here. So that one should have. Now then over here on the next one on G prime of X, we go from below to above. So this is a relative min. So that's not going to work for us. And goodness, this one doesn't even cross the x-axis anywhere. That one's a crackhead. So it looks like really the only one was A. So we have answer choice A. All right, and then number six, again, very similar. We have the graph of F, and we want to know well, which one can be the derivative. And so, again, we need to look for some x-intercepts to start with. And it looks like here, 
somewhere a little bit to the right of zero, we should have some kind of x-intercept here because that would imply that f prime is zero here. So down here, that would imply that I have an x-intercept. Okay, so continuing on looking, well, A looks okay. Now, B, I, I wouldn't think B could be the possible answer because we do have increasing and decreasing intervals up here, and this is all positive, and we're not strictly increasing, so I don't think it's B. C, well, C, well, based on just the x-intercept, C could be a possibility. And let's see, what about D? No, because D has two x-intercepts, and we don't have two maximum or minimum about, or two critical points up here, so let's chunk that. And then E looks like it might possibly, it could possibly fit in here. I don't think it will, but just based on where we're at, it, it might. I would look at increasing and decreasing intervals now. So let's look at where is my function increasing. So we're increasing all the way up to that x-intercept. So that means I need to be above the x-axis and then I cross the x-axis and then I go below the x-axis, so below. So above to below, well that looks like that's gonna get rid of C because that's below to above, it's right the opposite. So we need to distinguish between A and E. Now the thing is with E, the problem is looking at our graph originally, let me erase some of this, is notice on the ends, we're starting to turn again. It's not anything nice and neat and straight. So the fact that we're starting to turn right through here makes me think we might be headed for another um, crossing of the x-axis. So I would go ahead and toss out E, so my answer choice would be A. All right, so for number seven, um, on what intervals, if any, would my function f be increasing? Always take note that you're looking at the derivative graph. You need to know which function you're looking at. And so, let's see, we've got a line segment and a semicircle up here. So, we know that f is increasing. So, f, because we need to justify our answer, is increasing when f prime of x is positive or greater than zero. So that translates to graphically above the x-axis. So if we look at our graph, f prime is above the x-axis right through here. So the interval of increasing would be from negative three to negative two, open interval. Okay, so let's look at our next question. And this one really gave us some fits because it was a review problem. It just kind of snuck in there. We're writing the equation of the line tangent to the graph. And the line tangent, we're gonna have y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So do we have our x1 and our y1? Sure, it's right there. x1 is zero, y1 is three. Now we need our m. Remember, m is gonna be our derivative value at our given x, so f prime at zero. And a lot of us had question marks here Again, remember, this is the graph of the derivative. So what is the value of my function when x is zero? x is zero here, what's the y value? It's right here, it is negative two. So now I have everything I need to fill in these blanks. So y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. 
and you are more than welcome to leave your equation like this. Okay, now on number nine, on what intervals, if any, is F concave up? So F is concave up like a cup, concave up when, well, let's see, we're given the graph of F prime, so when maybe F prime is increasing. Why would we say F prime is increasing? Because that's going to be when F double prime is greater than zero. So over what intervals is F concave up? Well, that's when F prime is increasing. So where in the world is F prime increasing? Well, F prime looks like it's going to be increasing from zero up to two. We're increasing. I know we're negative because we're below the x-axis, but negative and increasing, really, that, that doesn't have that much of a um, tie to each other. So over what intervals would F be concave up? Well, that's going to be from zero to two. And several people got that. Congratulations. But several of us didn't. So I hope this helps. And then number 10, what is the absolute minimum of the function f? Well, the best we can do is say the minimum value of f occurs at or is at x equals, and let's see, at x equals what? Well, let's look. The minimum value so let's see if we can pinpoint, well, where has F been decreasing? Um, gosh, the most. Well, let's look. I think it would be decreasing the most when F prime is negative the most. And notice that we start being negative here at two, negative two, and we continue being negative all the way over here. So we know the minimum value is going to occur when x is 4. Now, we don't know what that actual value is. We just know where it's going to happen.